on King 5. More real people, today at 4.30. This is early today, December 3rd, 1982. Good morning, I'm Brian Gumbel, along with Jane Pauley. These are the headlines on this Friday morning. The MX missile program has barely survived a crucial house vote. President Reagan flies to Colombia after three days in Brazil. 61-year-old Barney Clark is reported in critical but stable condition after receiving an artificial heart, and the San Francisco 49ers beat the Los Angeles Rams in Thursday night football action. Those are the headlines. Now with details, here's Jane. And good morning. The administration's MX program has cleared a key congressional hurdle, but by the slimmest of margins. Karen Gray has the details. The MX barely passed the test. It took some long-distance arm-twisting phone calls to lawmakers from Defense Secretary Weinberger and President Reagan himself. Even the most ardent supporters of the MX missile admit it has a long, tough road in front of it. The MX is still in trouble, I think, and we still have a lot of work to do. It was Joseph Adabo's amendment to delete the $988 million funding for production of the missile that went down to defeat by a tie vote of 26 to 26. When you can beat the White House, the State Department, and the Pentagon, and all the other lobbying that you had, I think I had a good one when I came out with the 26-26 vote. The deciding tie vote was cast by Alexander of Arkansas, who admitted he's against the MX, but feels it deserves a thorough airing in Congress. What we saw today was a beginning of a debate on the question of, one, is the MX necessary and is it defensible? President Reagan's successful lobbying efforts have forced a lame duck session floor fight on the controversial MX missile. That fight should come early next week. Karen Gray, NBC News at the Capitol. President Reagan flies to Bogota, Colombia today after wrapping up his three-day visit to Brazil. White House correspondent David Rush has more on the president's Latin American trip. President Reagan wound up his Brazilian visit with a speech before Brazilian and U.S. business leaders in Sao Paulo. He asserted the United States is pulling out of its recession and expressed confidence Brazil will overcome its financial difficulties. Mr. Reagan departed from his written text to add a surprise element to the theme of U.S.-Brazilian cooperation. Well, today I'd like to propose an idea to you. To have a Brazilian astronaut train with ours so that Brazil and the United States can one day participate in a shuttle launch together as partners in space. Administration officials describe President Reagan's visit here as very warm, extremely productive, and worthwhile. But the rest of his trip may provide a study in contrast, for President Reagan travels next to Central America, where civil war and economic blight threaten U.S.-supported governments. David Rush, NBC News, with the President in Brazil. Barney Clark, who received an artificial heart Thursday, continues to show steady improvement, but doctors at the University of Utah Medical Center say there are still a million things to worry about. Clark is listed in critical but stable condition. Doctors say the next milestone will come when he can be taken off the respirator, but they're not ready to predict when that might happen. Hospital officials say Clark awoke several hours after the operation and was able to move around in bed and nod his head in answering questions. Science correspondent Robert Bazell will be with us later on today with a live update on Clark's condition. A tornado smashed into a trailer park in St. Charles, Missouri Thursday. At least 33 people were injured. Hundreds have been left homeless. Tornadoes also touched down in southern Illinois and central Arkansas. At least five people have been killed. The government releases the November unemployment figures this morning. We have a report from economic correspondent Irving R. Levine. The unemployment rate in November hit 10.8% up from 10.4 percent the previous month. You could see it coming at the end of November when 4,840,000 Americans collected unemployment benefits, a record number. About 6 million additional Americans had used up benefits or did not qualify. Figures like these led the Joint Economic Committee of Congress to forecast that the unemployment rate would rise from 10.4 percent in October to 10.5% in November. It actually hit 
which helps explain why the new five cent a gallon tax on gasoline is moving so quickly through the Congress. It is supposed to create 320,000 new jobs, perhaps just a drop in the bucket, but it is intended to show that Congress and the administration are trying to do something about unemployment. Irving R. Levine, NBC News at the Labor Department. Millions of people in New Jersey have been buying lottery tickets this week, hoping to cash in on a record jackpot. Norma Quarles has a report. In New Jersey, gambling fever is no longer confined to Atlantic City. People have been lining up all over the state to buy lottery tickets. That's because New Jersey's lottery jackpot had risen to an all-time nationwide high of more than $10 million. The jackpot's been growing because no one has won it for the past five weeks and because more than five million tickets were sold this week. Everyone knows what he'd do if he became a multi-millionaire. Gonna make coat and ski like those. Oh, my dreams come true then. Move from New Jersey. <laughs> Millions must have been watching New Jersey's public television station last night as the six winning numbers were drawn. And there you have it, the night's winning pick six lotto numbers. 18, 25, 05, 17, 12, and 03. One person or many people may have selected the right numbers. If there's one winner, that person will get more than a half million dollars a year for the next 20 years. We should know if there's a winner later today. Norma Quarles, NBC News. And we'll be back in a moment to get the weather report from Dr. Frank Field. A comment from early today's business reporter, Alan Abelson, on congressional action to limit the authority of the Federal Trade Commission. And the morning line on early today, after these messages.